The spire of All Saints dominates the ancient town of Bakewell. The name has nothing whatsoever to do with its famous puddings, but comes from the Anglo-Saxon, meaning bath well, because the town used to be famous for its healing springs. There's been a place of worship on this site oh, for over a thousand years, and the Saxon gravestones that decorate the porch of the church form the most extensive collection of ancient sepulchral stones in any church in England. But throughout the centuries, the church goes marching on, and now congregations of Bakewell churches join all saints to sing Onward, Christian Soldiers. Bakewell is the principal town in the Peak National Park, an area of great natural beauty that attracts a vast influx of visitors who come to explore in the summer months. Even in the winter, on Mondays, market day, the whole town springs to life as people from the outlying villages pour into town to sell their cattle and sheep, or even find a bargain on one of the stores. The market brings the whole community together, giving people a chance to exchange the local news. And the children especially enjoy seeing all the animals. Our next hymn, sung by the local Methodist junior school, was inspired by a seventh century lay brother at Whitby Abbey. He was uneducated, but wrote this poem in praise of his creator, the Song of Cadman.
Ian Lawton is a livestock auctioneer, and on Mondays he sells sheep in his hometown of Bakewell. We're selling all slaughter stock, which are going to, to various butchers, wholesalers and, and retailers. In an area around Bakewell, there are all forms of livestock. Uh, fat cattle for the butcher, barren cows, which are cows, dairy cows, which have finished their useful life producing milk. Again, they go for butchering and manufacturing. And there are also dairy cows, calves, which go for rearing, and store cattle, which go for further feeding. I'm selling to uh, professional buyers, and they are communicating bids to me. They want me to see them. Um, there are different mannerisms, various nods and winks, and, and uh, an indication that they want to take the next bid. It's a business. Um, you can't afford to be sentimental. That doesn't mean to say you've got to be cruel, but uh, it, it's, it is a business, and you can't. If you get sentimentally involved, you'd never do it properly. There are times when you have to be hard, but you're acting on behalf of somebody and you're there to make the best price for them and you mustn't lose sight of that fact. If you're not awake and alert, then what you're doing suffers and you've got to do it quickly if you're going to be any good at it. We do go to church, um, I'm afraid not very often. Uh, it's a question of time and I don't believe that uh, it's the amount of times that you go to church that is what makes a Christian. It's the way you live your life and treat your fellow man. My choice of him is now thank we all our God. Um, the reason is that I, I like the hymn anyway. It's a good old-fashioned hymn, perhaps. I think the sentiments of the hymn say everything as far as I'm concerned. Our daughter was ill last year, and one obviously says one's prayers at times like that. Uh, and if you can keep all, as we say in Derbyshire, all your troubles outside the front door, then you're winning. Marguerite Haymans became a Quaker over 40 years ago and has been a vegetarian for almost as long. The Quakers believe that there's something of God's spirit in everyone and uh, that God can speak to each one of us directly, which is an unusual thought. And so our meetings for worship are held in silence. In the silence, we have this... Uh, extraordinary sense of 
unity with God and with ourselves. Is nothing said? Yes, if, um, if anybody feels that they have a message to give, then uh, they certainly do give it. But there's an unspoken ministry as well as a spoken ministry, and that is what's so very much valued. I feel, really, that uh, Quakerism and uh, vegetarianism complement each other. This is my own personal feeling. And we have a Quaker advice mm. which says, show a loving consideration for all God's creatures. And I take that to include all living creatures, all animals, as well as humans. I can't reconcile with <laughs> market day in abattoirs. I can't imagine abattoirs in heaven. And to take the life of an animal for food, which we can f get quite adequately from natural sources, I've proved this over long years myself, uh, I feel this is not only unnecessary, but unethical. I'm doing my little bit in my little way. Well, as a Quaker, I know that you don't have hymns, but uh, this programme is about hymns. Would you choose one for us? The hymn I have uh, chosen is In Heavenly Love Abiding, because that uh, expresses for me the, the way of trust in God's guidance that I try to follow. John and Pat Bloomer own one of Bakewell's two pudding shops. Hello. Grandfather started the business about 80 years ago. The Bakewell pudding originated at the Rutland Hotel. It was then the White Horse Inn. Well, the recipe is very, very old. In fact, um, it is now in two halves. But I'm so loath to have it repaired because of the oldness of it. I don't want to distract from the value of it. But it's the original recipe um, as written in the cook's own handwriting, Mrs. Greaves. Puff pastry doesn't lend itself to machinery very well. The dough stage, 
and the rolling in of the fat and the um, final thicknessing is the only mechanised stage. Uh, after that, it is all a hand process. The bacon tart is a cakey mixture, whereas the bacon pudding is more of a runny mixture. The shell eggs, um, sugar, butter, um, and the secret. <laughs> and uh, raspberry jam in the bottom of the flake pastry case. Some people think it does have almonds in, but it doesn't have almonds. When it comes to Sunday, we find that Sundays there's so much to do here because it's impossible to do it all whilst you're open. We do tend to unwind a little on a Sunday as well. It isn't just work. And I think, you know, you need a little bit of time to unwind together as a family. I'd like to have, as my choice of him, guide me, O oh, thou great Redeemer, because we've always had such strong connection with Wales. Well, I think the piece about the bread of heaven is very appropriate. Bread of heaven <laughs> is very appropriate yes. for us, yes. <laughs> Claire Fletcher has lived in Bakewell for the past 18 years, but she remembers her Catholic upbringing in the village of Hassop, only three miles away. It's an unusual building, isn't it? Yes, it is, and my great-grandfather helped to build Hassop Church. And where did you live? At the Hassop Post Office. And my mother was born at the farm next to the post office. Did you help your mother in the post office? No, she wouldn't allow us because we'd have been reading the postcards and she wouldn't have had that. She was too businesslike. <laughs> Very strict. And you were at school here too? Yes, yes. All ten of us went to Hassett School. We went in at half past nine. We were allowed that because we, the, uh, a lot of the children came from a long way, you see. How did they, how did they travel? Uh, they walked it. They walked? Walked, yes, they did. Was there no, there was no transport? transport? No transport in those days, no, none at all. No. Well, in the winter it must have been, must have been dark as well. Uh, yes, it was, and then we depended on the moon, and my mother called it the parish lantern. That's all we had for light, the moon. What was your favourite subject? Geography. Geography? Oh, I love geography, yes. And uh, Miss Dykes used to say, when we started our geography lesson, that Derbyshire was the prettiest county in 
England. You had some very happy times when you were a child and throughout your life, but you've had some sad times lately, haven't you? What has helped you most in these times? Uh, church. My faith, yes, that's helped a lot. In what way? Well, you always feel you can go, you know, and pray, don't you, when you, you have faith. Mm. I've never lost my faith through all my trouble. You're going to choose a hymn for us. Which is that? Uh, Lord for Tomorrow and His Needs. Can you tell me yes, something well, about it? The words are wonderful. They are true to life. And also, I'm having it for a lot of my friends, not just for myself. Judith Bramwell, a Methodist, is at Nottingham University. In some of her vacations, she works in a chemist shop in Bakewell. Well, I work in the chemist during the holidays uh, to earn some money because my grant doesn't really go very far. I think since I've been to Nottingham University, it's really opened my eyes because if you live in a little town like Bakewell, it's very much like an Indy Blyton type storyland and you don't see the seamier kind of side of life. And you get into a place like Nottingham where you're living with all sorts of people and it's very, very easy to go the way of your friends and to feel pulled towards drugs, towards sex, towards the discos. But my faith just keeps me going. I mean, to be able to pray and, and have somebody to talk to and know that there's always somebody with you and you're not on your own, I think is tremendous. I don't think I could get through that. that. Um, I was always a deep-thinking child. I became a Christian when I was 13, and then I felt called to preach when I was 17. And I suddenly found that I could really talk about what I believed, and I had power. And it's amazing because I get this power every time I step into a pulpit. But people have really accepted me ever so well, and they really seem to enjoy my message. And everywhere I go, they always say, isn't it great to have a young person in the pulpit? I've always had a favorite hymn since I became a Christian, and um, that is the hymn Blessed Assurance, and my boyfriend calls it my national anthem because wherever I go, uh, if it fits into the service that I'm taking, I'll have it um, because it means so much to me. I think Blessed Assurance, Jesus is mine, and knowing that Jesus is mine is what sees me through.
Edmund Urquhart is the vicar of All Saints Church. This bridge, one of Bakewell's loveliest features, has stood here since the Middle Ages. It's been spanning the River Wye for hundreds of years. And to do its job today, it relies on its ancient strength and also thus becoming apparent the need for modern skills and techniques to reinforce its foundations against the wear and tear of today's traffic. The Christian way of life also draws on what is old and what is new. I see my work in Bakewell as completely grounded in the traditional Christian faith, but also it's my job to help myself and others to explore its meaning and its relevance for today. And so too with my family. Since crossing this bridge eight years ago to come and live in Bakewell, we've drawn strength from what is traditional as well as from what is new. My daughter Catherine, for example, soon began learning to play the piano and has had an opportunity at school recently to begin playing the viola as well, two quite traditional pursuits. James, on the other hand, around the time of his 13th birthday last year, became the owner of some disco equipment, to which he's added his own flashing lights. And this is just one way of illustrating the truth that we need, whatever our age, both what is old and what is new, to help us to be ourselves and to have a growing faith in God's love. Lord, you have taught us to value things both old and new. Grant us the insight and the will to lead constructive lives in the community, to be creative as Christians in the world, to persevere and wrestle with our faith. And may we find your love made real in the family of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always.